thank you. Um, is, is there a, a legume in the house? Is there a legume in the house? Well, of course the legume is dead. You know legume is dead. Legume has been dead several times. But you know what? It's not a big deal. You know why? Legumes fuck the devil. <laughs> the devil was so smitten with the ass fucking he got from Legume that he wears a little locket of him, picture of him and Legume with it. You know, it's really kind of creepy. <laughs> Legume's been to hell and back and probably has the, the STDs from the devil to prove it. That, that being said, if Legume is not dead, I would love to see him come up here and share with us his feelings on maybe being not dead or maybe being dead or you certainly look dead. By the way, y'all, I am scared shitless of this man. It is taking everything in my body not to run right now. In fact, you know what? Forget it. Screw it. This one's still on? Good. Wow. You want the pulpit in the center? What? Yeah. Come drag this pulpit. It looks pretty good from here. Yeah! Yeah, I'd, I'd, I'd yeah. leave it there. Sorry, it's been a while since I've been in a church. I feel naked without my gas can. <laughs> It's a funny story. The last time I preached in a church like this was, I guess, 1996, and it was in Pittsburgh. And I brought a shotgun with me to church. I brought this big black Mossberg 500 shotgun in there with me. And at one point during my sermon, I blew a hole in the ceiling of the church. <laughs> And there was this really hot-looking female cop in the front row. And afterwards, I'm carrying this shotgun out, and she walks up to me and she says, that's the most realistic prop I've ever seen. <laughs> yeah, usually uh, I got a lot better view of looking down women's titties from up here. <laughs> but it's kind of dark and everybody's back and I can't see shit anyway anymore. But uh, it's been a while since I've preached. It's been about a decade or so. I hope I'm not too rusty. Because I'd like to ask you all a few questions tonight. Do you ever feel like the universe has positioned a funnel for all of its shit over your life? Yes! <laughs> all the time. Do you feel the people around you draining your intelligence as you speak to them? Does it bother you that the decisions that affect your life are apparently being made by a pack of insidious fucktards? Fuck them! Do you ever find yourself sitting at a stoplight in the middle of nowhere, in the middle of the night, as minutes of your life tick away and you realize that you've become a slave to a glorified party light? Uh, I want those kids back! That's not gonna happen. One last question. Do you have $30? Yes! <laughs> if you answered yes to any or all of these questions, you can be saved. So true. J.R. Bob Dobbs is a spiritual GPS yes. to show you the way, the path through life, the path to slack, the super highway of slack, where there are no speed limits and there are no stoplights and those insidious fucktards are just bugs on the windshield. So true. And when you come to the end of that road, well, When you come to the end of that road, you don't want to wake up in some bland bargain basement afterlife that you weren't expecting. 
That would suck. You don't want to end up in some shitty third world afterlife with no. flies crawling around on your soul. That'd be terrible. No! Well, I'm here to tell you. It doesn't matter if you're pagan or Christian. It doesn't matter if you're Jewish or if you're Buddhist. It doesn't matter if you're an atheist or even a Canadian. <laughs> it doesn't matter because you tonight have the opportunity to spend after your afterlife in the coolest eternity ever devised by man nor gods. I would love that. I'm talking about, of course, subgenius heaven. Now, you might ask. What does Subgenius Heaven have that other national brand afterlives don't? <laughs> Beer. <laughs> now, it's been well established by Polish clerics and polka bands that in heaven there is no beer. But in Subgenius Heaven, you have all the beer you want, brothers and sisters. Can I get a praise beer? In subgenius heaven, there are verdant fields of the stickiest green buds of frock. And you can just walk into the middle of the field and light it on fire and stand. There are rivers of the finest liquors that you can just dive in, swim, and drink. And you'll never ever get tired climbing Crack Rock Mountain. Yeah! In subgenius heaven, you can huff the everlasting Jankum. In subgenius heaven, you can have sex with anyone or anything you please yeah! and do all of the most perverse, sick and twisted things that your sister would never let you do to her. In subgenius heaven, you can travel back and forth between the afterlife and earth in case you want to come back to tease fat ladies and Irishmen. And when you return to Subgenius Heaven, no one will have fucked with your stuff. Now, national brand religions, they ask a pretty high price for their afterlife. You have to give them all your money, or you have to go to church every Sunday and kiss the CEO's butt. Bullshit. Some religions, Hell, they want you to strap a dynamite vest to you and blow yourself to shit just to get to the afterlife. That sucks. They don't want you to have fun here on Earth. Because it's what makes their shitty bargain basement afterlife look good if they can deny you the opportunity of smoking and partying and drinking and dancing and whoring and queering and whatever it is that you want to do for fun. That's what I like to do. They don't want you to do that because they know that when, when they offer you an afterlife, they're not really offering you that much. It's, uh, it, it, it's just dime store religious pack that they're offering you. A boring afterlife where you're sitting around scratching your ass for eternity. Now, for an afterlife as good as Subgenius Heaven, we could easily, easily ask you to kill a wheelbarrow full of babies and staple them to your head. But the Subgenius Church only asks one thing. A single $30 donation. Less than the cost of a single cup of coffee at Starbucks. Now, how can we afford to offer an afterlife with such great features. It's such a reasonable price. 
Why it's simple. Because Bob loves you. And he's also pretty stupid. <laughs> but you, yes you, can profit from his stupidity. There's a catch though. No! You have to die first. And it's probably going to suck really, really bad. But hey, that was going to happen anyway. When cometh the day that you shuck that monkey suit that you're wearing, you're going to feel awfully stupid if you find yourself in some trailer park afterlife with a bunch of stupid pricks who are only there because they were pre-programmed for servitude in life. That would suck. Worse still, you might be reincarnated as some unwashed morphodite in a prog basement blowing goats over a webcam. I would hate that. I would hate that. Now, you might ask, what about the flying saucers that Reverend Stang and Bob promised would come? Where are they? Where are they? Where are they? They haven't come. It's been 10 years, they haven't come. And there's a good chance that you might not be here when they get here. God damn it. Like, it's true, it's true brothers and sisters. But you can have faith if you want to. Old Bob never claimed to be infallible. That's good. And Reverend Stang, well, old Reverend Stang, he got that message directly from Bob himself, but Back then, Reverend Stang was a little bit in there. A little bit in there. You know, I mean, he was into all kinds of fucked up shit. So you can't take him at 100% on that one. But you can have faith if you choose to. I like to. Faith is the difference between a mighty minotaur drinking a flagon of whiskey and fucking a hundred virgins and Reverend Stang drinking sugar-free grape Kool-Aid in a brown fuzzy hat. <laughs> if you're able and willing to have faith that the flying saucers will come and take you off to be a god on planet X, despite the fact that they're a decade late, then it won't cost you any extra to have a little faith in plan B. <laughs> it's no coincidence that Dobbs always says, give me slack or kill me. Yeah, he knows something. And even if you think this is all just utter crap, your ticket to eternal salvation also comes with a bunch of really cool shit that you can use to freak out your family and your bosses. And if you're lucky, they'll kill you and you'll have it made. And if you're real hardcore, you might get to go to Subgenius Hell. Subgenius Hell, well, that has all the same things as Subgenius Heaven, only there's too much of it. For all that, it's chump change. It's good to Don't be a chump. Yeah. Good night, brothers and sisters. And, uh, I don't know who's coming up next. Priestess Pipes is here. I'm glad to fill you in. Last minute edition. Last minute Strap edition. Strap on preacher. Strap on preacher.